Hello everybody, today I'm going to talk to you about difficulties getting health services into space. Um, there, will, there won't be that much um, technical vocabulary. Uh, I'll talk about Tim Peake, I'm sure you've heard of. I'll talk about NASA and I'll talk about the International Space Station. Okay. Hello everybody, today I'm going to talk to you about health services in space. Now as we see in the UK every day at the moment, health services are rather difficult to manage. <clears throat> Junior doctors have been on strike and with Brexit, who knows where the NHS will be? Everybody says there is not enough money in the system. However, if we think we have problems with medical care on Earth, Imagine the problems seen by those in space. Now, with Tim Peake's recent journey into space, concerns relating to medical aid have been raised. Tim Peake had 40 hours of medical training before being blasted into space. And in addition to life-saving skills, he had to be taught how to stitch a wound, give an injection, and even extract a tooth. According to NASA, this training would prepare him and his crew members for the most common medical problems faced on the International Space Station, or the ISS. For example, motion sickness, headaches, back pain, skin conditions, burns and dental emergencies. However, faced with a more serious medical emergency, there would be a problem. The medical kit on the ISS is basic. It contains a first aid kit, a large book of medical conditions and some medical equipment including a defibrillator, a portable ultrasound, a device for looking into the eye and other types of medicine. And although the ultrasound device that I've just talked about can generate very clear pictures um, of the inside of the human body, and relay them to a medical team back on Earth for help with diagnosis, there would be no means of fixing an actual problem on the International Space Station. Um, Dr David Green, who is a senior lecturer in aerospace physiology at King's College London, um, says that it would be better to return a patient, a sick person on the International Space Station back to Earth um, but then, again, that's not exactly straightforward. Um, if we look at this problem in a broader way, however, we can see parallels with the problems of getting medical services in space um, with the problem of getting medical aid to the most remote parts of the Earth. In many parts of the world, basic emergency and acute medical facilities just don't exist. Doctors there often don't have any experience or training, just like those people on the International Space Station, and patients in remote parts of the world are clinging to life just as they would on the International Space Station. So what is being done to try and solve these problems? Well, scientists are now stating that a possible resolution would be the use of telemedicine. It is becoming more widespread in the developing world and they say that we should try and um, give these opportunities to more developing parts of the world. Telemedicine is the remote treatment of patients by a doctor using an electronic video or audio link, something that you can actually get in space. When an internet connection is all that is needed in a remote location to dial up an experienced doctor to ask for advice, um, these very cheap interventions can make the difference between life and death. What is more, the technology that is being developed um, for the International Space Station to try and um, increase the amount of medical aid could benefit communities, um, as I say, developing communities, but also communities in disaster zones, in high altitude areas and in remote and isolated villages. 
the needs are actually very similar. Medical devices must be small, light, robust and low in power consumption in space as in these remote places. Therefore, NASA and the European Space Agency have made it their business to share the benefits of any innovations in aerospace technology with the wider medical and science community. In conclusion, as manned space missions are planned to the Moon, Mars and beyond, the need to improve emergency medical care in space increases ever more. In parallel with this, the need to improve medical services in the most remote areas of the world is also very pressing. Let us hope that with the help of NASA, we will see serious improvements in this area in the next few years. Thank you.